This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Office clerk charged with embezzlement. 22-year-old Avery Price, an office clerk of Greenville Road, 9 miles in Bull Bay, St. Andrew, has been charged with embezzlement in connection with an incident in 7 miles Bull Bay in the parish on Tuesday, May 4. Reports from the Harborview Police are that Price completed the sale of goods amounting to over 600,000 Jamaican dollars. However, Price reportedly handed over 127,000 Jamaican dollars to the complainant. Upon further checks, it was discovered that the amount handed over by Price did not match the materials sold on the establishment. On Thursday, May 20, Price was arrested and subsequently charged. Price will appear before the St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday, May 27. Four men linked to car stealing ring held by cops and residents. Police say they have apprehended a group of men who they suspect are a part of a car stealing ring in the corporate area. The four men were held during an operation that saw residents working with local authorities. Sources said the men were recently held in the Dunrobin area in Kingston. A two-minute video showing the men being placed on the ground by residents have since been circulating on social media. Sources claim that one of the men in the group was taken from a motorcycle. Reports are that the motorcyclist was sent around to identify motor cars for the other members of the group to target. In the comprobing fatal shooting of Mashek Taunting Man in Trelawney, the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is probing the shooting death of a man who the police say attacked cops with a machete. The incident happened in Cotton Tree District, Alberton, Trelawney, on Sunday. The deceased has been identified as 29-year-old Tyrone Powell. Indicom says the police reported that about 8 p.m., five cops were making inquiries in the community regarding a man armed with a gun in the area. On arrival of the police, it is alleged that the man attacked the cops with a machete. Four of the cops reportedly fired their weapons in response to the attack. Indicom says no firearm was recovered, but a machete was reported as retrieved at the incident scene. Powell was hit. The weapons of the concerned officers were seized, photographed, boxed, and sealed for testing at the government forensic laboratory. They were served with Section 21 notices to furnish statements and attend the offices of Indicom to be interviewed this week. 17-year-old accused of shooting one-year-old surrenders to police. A 17-year-old boy is now in custody after he was accompanied by his parents to the police station in relation to the shooting of a one-year-old girl in Denham Town, Kingston last Wednesday. The Kingston Western Police, following investigations, had called for the youngster to turn himself in before 6 p.m. last Thursday evening. He is a juvenile and he is in custody. He turned himself in with his parents. The investigation is not complete yet. We have to do some more work until next week. Commanding officer of the Kingston Western Police Division, Superintendent Michael Phipps, told the news yesterday. According to the police, the teenager allegedly entered a section of the community called Bread Lane about 7.55 p.m. and fired shots wildly. The child, who was being held by a parent, was shot in the leg. She was taken to the Bustamante Hospital for Children, where she has been undergoing treatment. A day later, another infant fell victim to gun violence in the community when one-year-old Romario McCain was shot during a clash between thugs and members of the security forces about 7 p.m. on Thursday. Later, another baby was shot. In the meantime, Assistant Commissioner Clinton Leng of the Criminal Investigations Branch told the news that an incident similar to what occurred in Denham Town recently where thugs wreak havoc in communities and inflict harm on children. Do not see protests and roadblocks mounted by residents because they may be fearful or may be protecting the criminals. Residents are, however, eager to demonstrate if the police are involved. The last such demonstration took place last Wednesday when residents of Greenwich Town took to the streets to block roads and protest against the fatal police shooting of O'Neill Chambers, who was killed by police while they were rushing to respond to a shooting in a neighboring community. The residents claimed that Chambers was killed in cold blood. 
but Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, who heads the St. Andrew South Police Division, in which Greenridge Town is located, said Chambers was shot in response to a perceived threat to the group of officers after he pulled a firearm on them. It is clear that they have a strategy employed where once they believe it is the police involved in a killing, you will find them making a whole lot of outcry. But when it is coming from a citizen to a citizen within the community, they tend not to say much. And I think that mostly they do this because of fear, said Phipps. Prime Minister nudged to react to child shootings. Spurred by recent gun attacks on infants as young as one year old, child rights advocate Betty Ann Blaine is calling on Prime Minister Andrew Holness to make a bold and uncompromising statement that the nation will take a zero-tolerance stance on violence against children. It can't be that we are living in a society where every single day, weeks, months and year, you hear about all these crimes against children and people feel that they can just do anything to a child and get away with it. Blaine charged on Monday. Blaine said that the Prime Minister should send a strong message or dictate that if you rape, murder or physically abuse a child in any way, the investigations will be swift, sure and steady and the penalties are going to be extremely severe. The spate of shootings and sexual assault reports has been particularly tragic in May, which is observed nationally as Child a Month. Last week, three infants, a one-year-old, two-year-old and a four-year-old, were shot between Wednesday and Friday in the western and eastern quarters of the capital, Kingston. In the last incident, which occurred on Friday, a four-year-old girl was shot three times in her legs. The girl was shot on Walter Street in East Kingston when gunmen pounced on a group of women and children in the community in an ongoing feud. A six-year-old was also shot dead, allegedly by a 15-year-old, in Westmoreland last week. Blaine stressed, that violence against children has been an unfortunate feature of the society for decades. It is disturbing, particularly when you look at the ages of the children who are being attacked. They are getting younger and younger, she said. Month end Saturday openings for select tax offices. Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, says it will open select tax offices every last Saturday of the month for the remainder of the 2021-2022 financial year. The special initiative will begin this Saturday, May 29. The participating tax offices are Conson Spring, Montego Bay, Mandeville, Savannah Lamar, St. Anne's Bay and Old Harbor. The tax offices will operate from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The TAJ says the service is being implemented to provide taxpayers with a convenient option of doing business on those weekends as well as to alleviate the usually high walking traffic at tax offices during the busy month and weekday period. The Pornmore Tax Office will continue its usual weekly Saturday operations with adjusted business hours 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.